you run and have you have completed if i if i remember correctly from what you're telling me right before we went live two ultra marathons yes i have so that just you know shit on my whole journey right there to i wouldn't this. say no i'd say your journey is your journey my journey is different but your it's accomplishment of better. doing yours is oh, bigger and better that's what i would mean. not say better i'd say just <laughs> longer yeah but yeah i've done two ultra marathons uh so they were 51k i mean 50k which is 31 miles okay okay uh Technically speaking, they consider anything over a marathon, which is 26.2, to be an ultra marathon. Okay. Uh, the most widely recognized distances after that is 50K, 50 mile, then 100 miles. Yeah, David Goggins is the, the guy who's doing the 100 mile ones all the time. I want to read his yeah. book really bad. I really do. He's, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. What's interesting about Goggins is he never really – he did it to push himself. He was, I would not say he is your classic endurance athlete. Yeah. You know, he does it, you know, he's for military and things like that. He's a phenomenal person, you know, but he does it more to push himself. Mm -hmm. You know, I got into it because super long story short. I mean, my life is always a long story. 2016, I uh, had my son who got a viral illness and became permanently disabled. To, that was the spring of 2016. Spring of 2017, my wife was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Uh, my wife, she was big into running. She had completed ultra marathons. She'd completed multi-day stage races, things like that. Uh, at that point, uh, my weight was getting a bit high, and then it got really high to the point that I was pushing about 250 pounds on my 510 frame and it wasn't muscle gotcha, gotcha. and so spring of 2017 i'm like i gotta do something i i you know i have two people you know two of the closest people in my life with you know progressive diseases and disability i got to take my health serious so i can be there for them and so over my break of the summer from teaching i thought i'm gonna see if i can drop 20 pounds over the summer uh, so I started exercising and for me, that was a challenge. I, again, I'd always been in, like I said, an athlete. I, you know, love playing sports, uh, but actually really just sitting down to exercise was newish for me. I'd had a couple of, you know, things here and there. And so I just started with like walking 20 minutes on a treadmill and 20 minutes became 40, 40 minutes came closer to an hour started watching what I was eating. I was like, whoa, this is working. Weight's coming off. We get towards about the end of the summer and I am friggin' bored on the treadmill. I'm like, if I get on this treadmill one more time, I'm probably going to take a hostage. I <laughs> couldn't do it anymore. So I decided I'm going to go for a trail run. And over at Rockport Park, which is over kind of by Uroc, there's a nice network of mountain bike trails. And uh, back in the day, my wife and I would go out there and run every once in a while. So I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to go for a run out here. Uh, running on pavement, you know, hurts the knees. I'm still a little heavy. It's boring. And I just put on some music and I just went for a run. And I got lost. I fell. I ran in circles. And I fucking loved it. Before I know it, before I knew it, I had ran over four miles and it felt like I just started. And I'm like, oh, this is different. This is not just running on the sidewalk. This is not just running on the road. This is something different. And so from that point on, I became a trail runner. You know, we just, we run, we just run on trails. Interesting. And I like it because you're out in nature, but also, when I'm, you know, and I run just about, I exercise these days just about every day. There's one, usually one day a week, Fridays, where I have to wake up really early and go to work. I'll walk nearly three miles at, at work that day, but I don't really exercise. But I exercise just about every day. Usually running is part of that. But like running on the sidewalks, running on the road, you know, it's just kind of robotic. One foot, one foot, one foot, one foot. Hope I don't get hit by a car. Mm-hmm. 
running on the trails. Like I'm jumping over stumps. I'm watching out for roots. I'm dodging rocks. I'm, you know, stomping through a Creek out of nowhere. I got a huge Hill that I got to get over, you know, I'm engaged. I'm alert. It just, mm -hmm. it's, I, it's hard to describe it. And so that was my thing. I became then a trail runner. Uh, I had never really, you prefer that over like traditionally, like just running on the side of the road and whatnot too. Absolutely. Gotcha. The problem is, is I have to drive to the trails, whereas I can just wake up and run, you know, yeah. get on my sidewalk and run. I have to drive to a trailhead or whatever, but yes, I absolutely prefer it. It's, it's just different. And, you know, at that point, uh, like I said, I, I was, I had done a couple of five K's here and there and I was pretty proficient at a five K, you know, about three miles. Mm-hmm. Uh, one time my wife convinced me to do a, a 10 K with her, which was six miles and I about died. <laughs> uh, so that's the fall of 17. So I decided I'm going to do this 10 K, the North face, the apparel company that used to sponsor a really big racing series. And they actually had one kind of actually over by where you live, sort of over by Eagle Palmyra. Okay. And I went there and did the 10 K, you know, I'd done the 5 K a couple times. I did the 10 K race, loved it. I'm like, okay, we're on to something. And I just kind of set, kept setting bigger and bigger goals, uh, you know, run through the winter time, you know, my four mile training run became six miles. That became seven. I started doing a couple of half marathons. I did my first half marathon in the fall, in the spring of 18. I'd never done a half marathon before. It was Memorial Day weekend. It was like 85 degrees and I almost died. Jesus, yeah. But it just kept building. It just kept building. And I set a goal for 2019 to train for an ultra marathon, to complete one. And also at this point. Had you done I a marathon? Had... I know you said you nope. did a. Okay, you, you just wanted to skip. You I just skipped the over the marathon. Let's just do well, what's marathon. funny is, what's funny is for a lot of trail runs, they don't, the marathon distance really isn't offered very often. Yeah. It's like they'll do like, hey, we got a 5K, a 10K. And then we got a 50 K. I'm like, what about like the 26 miler option in between? Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I just kind of skipped over it at the same time in the spring of 2018, when I did that first half marathon. So as you mentioned, yeah, I'm a veteran. Uh, when I was doing my research for the North face, I saw that one of their partners, like charity partners was an organization called team red, white, and blue call also just called team RWB. And it's a kind of an outreach support engagement group for veterans and families of veterans or what have you. I was like, wait a minute, this sounds really cool. And it really, it, for me, it was like that thing that I've been missing from the service ever since I got out. A bunch of veterans who get together to do activities, whether it's camping, it's running, biking, we're just gonna get together and have, you know, have breakfast, we're gonna do some volunteer work. The one thing I miss about the military was camaraderie. You know, you'd look at somebody, you see the green, you know, the green and black camouflage, and you're like, that's my brother. Yeah. With team red, white, and blue, you see the red jersey with the white and blue eagle. You're like, that's my brother. And so I made this. I did a half marathon spring of uh, spring of 19. And one of my good friends from team red, white, and blue says, well, if you thought this course was tough, this 50K I'm going to run in the fall is a lot easier. You should just do that with me. I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds fun. <laughs> and so I trained for this 50K. It was not fun and it was not easy. And my friend lied. How do you train but, for 50 K? What's the training look like? For me, one of the hardest things was understanding. So you also have to keep in mind is you're making fun of D Hart for his age for saying that he's 36 going on 49. <laughs> uh, I'm 50. Gotcha. And when I did this, I was 49. And so one of the things my wife had said, she kind of gave me a, some, a plan to kind of follow, but she's like, you got to take rest days. You got to take a day off. I'm like, no, I got to be training every day. She goes, nope, that's a really good way to get injured. And so you just kind of gradually increase your distances. And there's, you know, if people are being really serious about it, they have actual formulas, increase your mileage by X amount percentage every week and stuff like that. And I kind of followed a rough estimate of that. And you'd have like a build week. Then you'd have like a down week where, you know, your longest run would be half of what your longest run was the week before you kind of build up. Yeah. I've heard stuff like that. I heard too, that like you never end up actually like 
uh, doing the actual mount, you're gonna run, right? Like you don't, you don't, you build up like kind of close to it within like however many miles, but you don't want to actually like do that or more than that because that's an easy way to really mess Stop. yourself up. Yeah. Sorry, I had to tie my shoes there. Exactly. Awesome. And uh, I actually used trail runs that were being put on that year as like a lot of my training runs. Uh, and I did a 24 miler. And I was like, okay, if I could do 24, I could probably just add seven more to that. And what, why does yeah. anyone set up a 24 mile? Why not add the extra 2.2 .2 or whatever to get the? I wondered that too, but it was exactly the so. Um, this was running part of the ice age. I, I agree. I'm like, why couldn't we have just added a half mile here and a half mile there? Yeah. It, there's these two segments of the ice age trail over kind of by. Like the Belleville, Brooklyn area, you know, okay. west, west of Madison. There's these two segments of the Ice Age Trail that just link up perfectly to each other. And it's like exactly six miles with the two links. I'm like, yeah, I would have loved a 20, I would have loved to get, you know, to get that marathon out. So it was what we call an out and back. We ran to the end, back, then we ran to the end and back twice. You know? So yeah, I really wish that would have been, that would have been nice. I could have checked that one off because I got like, you know, so many 5Ks, 10Ks, halves to you know 50 k's but i don't have that that uh 26 miler and you know how do you get ready for a basketball season you know you have a plan you know how do you balance multiple things uh i don't know. you just do it you know you just do it because otherwise it's failure and failure is not an option mm -hmm. you know and so trained and you know, I trained sensibly. So that's when you're saying you're like, you're going to run a marathon without any training. I'm like, Ooh, Ooh. yeah, it rips you. It rips you up, man. It, it was bad. It was real bad. My guy, Tyler had to do physical therapy afterwards because of it. So, um, no. yeah, it's my bad. wife will say that most people, most healthy people, your age, Tyler's age can usually fake your way through like a half marathon with minimal training, but you start going above a half marathon. You actually need to take it serious. Oh yeah. And so, yeah, we just, you know, I had my plan. I followed it. Some days were, some days were good training days, just like some days you have a good, a good practice. There was one, one day I remember I drank way too much water way too quickly and I got really sick. Like it's called hyponatremia where basically you dilute your salt. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of sodium. This, yeah. So I, I did that by accident and like, I don't even really remember driving home. I was so woozy. I just remember when I got home, I was laying down. I'm like, oh, I think I have to puke. I'm I just exploded water vomit all over my bathroom. Oh God! But you learn from those things. I'm like, okay, I've learned. I need to mix electrolytes. I just can't drink straight water. I need to take more sips and you know be a little easier. Yeah, I um, you know, it's I I really enjoy running too. I hated running, and I I still dislike um. I mean, I, I could do, I think I understand the importance of like sprints and whatnot now in athletics when, as opposed to when I was like going through being like coached and whatnot and growing up for me, never doing cross country or doing very mm -hmm. little track running was a punishment in the sports that I played. Right. So it was like, I never wanted yeah. to do it. Now I actually love running. I love, and I don't plan on doing people. We've had, um, cause when we set up, we did our marathon, like we went, we drove it out and we, we went and mapped it out on Google maps. It wasn't like a real, mm -hmm. there wasn't no race, whatever. Yeah. We just wanted to see if we could do it. We posted up the thing, asked if anyone wanted to come with us. It was for a YouTube video. Um, but, and we've had people ask, Oh, you're going to do another one. I, no, I don't want to do another one. I don't plan on doing mm -hmm. another one. Maybe if I get bored enough, I would, but I just enjoy running. I go for Honestly, I didn't start to feel it even when we ran the marathon. I think I'm just very lucky. Like I didn't really start feeling like tight or anything until like, I think it was like 12, 13, 14 miles. I'm like, okay, I think I need to stop now. And then, you know, you keep going. But like for me, like but that's usually out, what like, happens. Yeah. I just get out and like run, like, uh, like I can go for like five miles, seven miles. And it's just like, mm -hmm. it's nothing, it's nothing. And I, I enjoy it. And I actually like running on the road, except for we don't, like have a lot of sidewalk in some of the areas that I'm at. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm running at like a, a sideways sort of. So mm -hmm. like one like it band is like super tight when I'm done, if I don't like switch yeah. sides. Um, but I love it just like being able to, sometimes I don't even run with headphones. I just like to just, just be there and just, I don't know, just, I, I like that I can see how far I've gone and, and stuff like that. So I, I really get bogged down on the treadmill sometimes where it's like, Oh, boring. I, 
the only reason I can stand the treadmill is because I have a stupid video game that I can play in my iPad. <laughs> it sits there, I can balance it, and I can play this game and just distract myself. Yeah. You know, so when I do a treadmill workout, I actually don't run that much. I'll sprint for about a half mile, three quarters of a mile to kind of get my heart rate up. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of more walk at a fast pace. Yeah. When I'm on the treadmill because I, 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 I hate it. And yeah, and I get you about all that too. Uh, you know, for me, the only opposite is unless I'm with somebody, I, you know, I, I just have to have music. You know, music has always been like that thing. And yeah. I just have to have my music. Uh, one of the really thing, you know, cool things that I love about running and, you know, I try to encourage former athletes to keep going. For me, it's also been a way that I found some, even though I'm super laid back and easygoing, I am incredibly competitive. And running has been this thing that allows me to have this competitive outlet in a healthy way. You know, yeah. so I'm competitive when I run, so I'm not competitive at work and trying to undermine the people I work with so I look better. Uh, and, you know, you can be competitive against the people you run. You can be competitive against yourself. You know, you can set your personal records. You can, you know, try to beat other people. You can go for age group awards. I've gotten to the point that for five and 10Ks, I'm pretty competitive in my age group, depending on the size of the race and things like that. Which is really be... cool. That's interesting that you mentioned that. I didn't really think of other than like, I guess you don't realize that there's all these different levels to it because for me, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to, you know, you, sometimes you only see like, okay, well, I'm not going to make the Olympics. Like why should, why would I be, you know, competitively mm -hmm. running and whatnot? But that, that makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah. And you know, if I were to say that I have any athletic accomplishment, uh, <laughs> I won an age group national championship for trail running. Oh, wow. Congratulations. What, what, uh, what was the award specifically? So 2019. Uh, so you've probably heard of like Spartan races. Yeah. We have one right here in Richmond, like right across the border. Okay. So, you know, that's a brand. So there was a brand that was called Viking Dash, and they would put on trail races across the country. And they did some in the Chicago, more Crystal Lake area. And it just looked to me like it'd be a fun time. And it takes a special kind of person to think that that's a fun time. I've, I got that a lot with the marathon thing that they're like, why yes. did you think that was a good idea? I don't know. Well, I know that at like an ultra marathon distance, I'm not going to be competitive. I'm just going to, I'm doing that for me to push myself. But like I said, at shorter distances, I can be pretty competitive. And they offered a 15 K version, which is about nine miles. Okay. And, uh, Somehow I took second in my age group at the Chicago race, which qualified me for nationals. Wow. And I went to the national race and I friggin' won it for my that's, age group. That's insane. That is they insane. They had 45, you know, it was a smaller age group group, but it was 45 to 49. Mm -hmm. And I friggin' won it. I, you know, it's one of the few times that I've approached something like that, though, with like a real strategy and a plan. Yeah. Uh, they had sent us pictures because it was in Muncie, Indiana. That's where they're headquartered. And they'd just been getting hammered with rain. They posted a picture of one of their workers standing in like ankle deep mud. Oh, and I knew that everybody racing was going to have to go through that mud. So that would be a great equalizer. Because some people have different strategies. Some people are like, hey, I'm going to go out really fast and try to maintain for a while. Some people are like, I'm going to go a little bit slower and build. I knew that everybody getting to that mud was going to have to slow down and probably walk and take it easy. So I went out a little bit hotter mm -hmm. and, you know, stuck to my plan. And like I said, yep, I hit that mud and everybody had to walk because you were not running in that mud. It was like grabbing your shoes. I'm seeing people walk by carrying one of their shoes in their hands. Oh, gross. I'm finding spare shoes. I get my turn around. I go back through the mud. Now my shoes are all heavy and stuff like that. And I, don't, I just, I saw this guy in front of me and my wife and I would often talk about when we're doing races about, we're going fishing. I see that guy in front of me. My goal is to reel that person in. So no matter what I do for the rest of the race, I want to reel this person in. And so I'm trying to pick up the pace and I see he's going a little bit slower. I'm like, okay, I think I can do this. And I don't know what it was, but something hit me. I'm like, hmm, that guy looks like he's 45 to 49. 
<laughs> and I'm like, that's my goal is to pass this guy. If I don't do anything else, I'm going to pass this one guy. And he was the guy that was in first. And I reeled him in and passed him. And wow. I, yeah, I'm like, okay, I will take this. That's awesome. That's, that's, I mean, that's incredible. Congratulations for real. And that was that, that was one of those pictures that the picture that I sent you that you used was me at that race. Oh, wow. Okay. So now we get the yeah. history behind it. That's insane. Yeah. And like I said, I went in with a little bit of strategy. You know, those are always those things when we plan like a long run or whatever. How much are you going to carry? You know, you know, are you going to carry your own hydration? Are you going to count on aid stations to provide you with something to eat or drink along the way? Mm -hmm. And I just thought I'm going to go, I'm going to be, I, I will be faster if I can just run, you know, I'm not going to have a hydration belt or carry a water bottle. I'm just going to rely on what they have and hope to God I don't die of dehydration. Thanks for watching that last video, guys. Click right over here to see the episode in its entirety. Or click over here to subscribe and check out all the other cool shit we have on the channel. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do it.